So I hope everyone's enjoying the conference. There's a lot of amazing sessions, a lot of great speakers, and I'm honored to be part of it. Welcome back to the Microsoft 365 virtual conference. I hope you enjoyed Caruana's um, keynote speech. I am Russ Bazura. I'm going to be discussing Microsoft Teams and empowering first-line workers, first-line remote workers with Microsoft Teams. So I know a lot of you's had the SharePoint conference on your schedule for this year. Obviously, with everything that we're going through, that has been rescheduled for next year, March 23rd through the 25th. So get that on your schedule. Um, these are our sponsors and uh, great sponsors, and they contribute a lot. And we cannot do these events. I tr trust me, we cannot do these events without our sponsors. So thank you for their generosity and their involvement. Please take time to uh, reach out to them whenever you have a need. So my background is I usually tell people I was doing SharePoint since before it was SharePoint. Um, my I really started in 1999 was involved with the product development teams for SharePoint, uh, mostly on the testing end but uh, spent a couple years doing that and then got involved with some more enterprise clients and deployments with SharePoint, eventually focused my business entirely on SharePoint. And um, you know, now I'm doing Teams. So um, you know, I've worked mostly with midsize and enterprise customers. Um, you know, I spent about 10 years building a gold Microsoft partner, uh, helping deliver solutions to those companies. And then I uh, took a little bit of a break um, and came back as teams started taking off. It was interesting to me. I liked the value and the, the proposition that it brings with the video conferencing and real time chats on top of SharePoint. It was kind of the boost that SharePoint needed. Um, I've spent eight years running the Philadelphia SharePoint user group, and I've done a bunch of SharePoint Saturdays and written a bunch of books and blogs. And so for the last five years, I've been working from home. Three years of that has been focused on Microsoft Teams. So there's really three key areas that we're going to hit today is the first line worker features in the Microsoft 365 platform as a whole. Then we're going to talk about shifts and this is the teams part teams and shifts uh, focusing on the shifts application and what the features are there for your first line workers. And then we're going to talk about future stuff and what's coming in terms of shifts and new functionality for your first line remote workers. So what is a first line remote worker? First line remote worker is the first to engage with your customers. They're the first to represent your company's brand. They're the first to perform services. They're the first to present products and operations. Uh, so they are really your point of contact for your customers. One key to it is it's really anybody that clocks in and clocks out on a regular basis. One of the biggest pain points that we have with dealing with first line workers or maybe our first line workers have. Is scheduling um, and being able to manage shifts and schedules and at the same time be flexible enough to, you know, if if they have something personal going on to be able to drop a shift and at the same time pick up new shifts. So we're going to talk about those capabilities, the scheduling capabilities that are in shifts. So first line worker examples. Um, again, I said pretty much anybody that clocks in and clocks out, but in terms of roles, you've got teachers, construction workers, police officers, firefighters, telecommunication workers, um, you know, the pole climbers, the 
uh, doctors, nurses, restaurant servers, fast food workers. Um, they're just all, you know, great examples of a first line worker. You know, also in there are sales associates that are out in the store in retail business, factory workers on the factory floor. They are all first line workers that as part of their daily responsibilities have to clock in and clock out and work shift schedules and also they are defined as first line remote workers. So one of the other distinct characteristics of first line workers as a group is they're really the largest group of workers in in the world. Now we've got approximately 2 billion first line remote workers at any one point in time around the world. Now it's a huge number and frankly it's underserved in terms of the capabilities that companies give those first line workers uh, in with technology. So this is the Microsoft Teams and Shift's capability as part of the Microsoft 365 platform is a fantastic functionality for those first line workers to help them be more productive, more efficient, and more effective in terms of their daily activities. So uh, some of the capabilities with the as part of the first line worker and some of this is available today. Some of it is functionality that that is coming uh, this year. So uh, really everything here is from what I understand is supposed to be deployed and part of either the Microsoft 365 platform or shifts app um, by the end of the first half. So I know we're pushing up against that now, but the walkie talkie feature is one of the first things. So the new push talk experience enables clear, instant, secure voice communications over the cloud between employees. Um, functionality is built natively into Teams and it re reduces the number of devices employees must carry and lowers the overall cost of IT uh, and just improves communications. So look for that capability. Um, tasks. So targeting, publishing, reporting uh, on tasks uh, is another capability that's coming that is first line worker specific. Uh, so customers can now drive consistent execution of store operations at scale across all of the organization's locations. Corporate and regional leadership can send task lists targeted to the relevant locations, specific retail stores and track progress through automatic real-time reports on tasks. Another place, another section is workforce, workforce management integrations. So this is things like Kronos and JDA uh, for scheduling and time and attendance. It can now start integrating directly with shifts and teams um, because there's you know, different supported scenarios including like uh, management of shifts and schedules Groups, swap requests, time off requests, a lot of this we're going to be able to be talking talk about today and show you what's in shifts. Uh, but SMS signing is another one. So the first line workers, they can basically get a text on their cell phone that will allow them to sign in to the application in the shifts and teams through a SMS. And um, Essentially, it's a one-time password that they can sign on and access the application. So any, you know, it basically enables first-line workers to seamlessly access all of the applications that they are authorized to use on the Microsoft 365 platform. Another one is shared device sign out. And this is basically, uh, you know, any, First line workers that are using a single tablet or mobile device that is shared between shifts. Um, you know, these can pose sec unique security challenges when you have multiple individuals using that same device. Um, this capability essentially it gives you uh, shared device sign out, which is, you know, it basically enables them to log out all out of all of the Microsoft 365 applications in one way. 
And then you also have coming is off shift access controls for teams and apps. And this is basically gives IT the capability to administer when an individual user can sign into uh, shifts. So essentially, if they're not on the clock and not working at that time, um, they can be denied access to sign in. So if they're trying to sign in from home and you know off the clock, um, the Microsoft 365 platform uh, prevents that from happening. Um, then you've got delegated user management. So basically, first line managers can approve password resets and enable employees to use their phone numbers for SMS sign in all via single customizable portal um, that's enabled by IT for, for your first line managers. Um, the delegated user management can give first line managers access to the portal so that they can unblock all staff issues, reducing burdens on IT and uh, for the burden of you know, identity management and keeping basically employees connected to the apps they need to do their job. And then lastly um, is inbound provisioning from SAP and success factors to Azure AD. So essentially um, this makes it easier than ever to onboard and manage first line workers um, and identities at scales and across any application using Azure AD. Um, so right now I believe it's in public preview and based upon the ability to provision users into Azure AD from um, you know, success factors. So that's kind of some of the stuff that's either there now or coming in the very near future. So there's four key areas really, and this is these are team specific functionality that is um, relevant for first line workers and you know it's your communication your chats your messages your real time conversations inside of teams is one of the key pillars for a first line worker another is access to documents and being able to you know access things like store setup guides um, any any type of standard operating procedures right from their mobile device in you know stores or wherever they are actually working at access to industry apps so you know this isn't just the apps like um, shifts it's uh, apps from third party uh, line of business uh, providers also they are industry specific so you have you have those capabilities there and that's one of the keys and then uh, of course scheduling which is a large part of what we will talk about and i'll show you today So um, shifts for first line workers, and the, this is all specifically shifts functionality and um, what what is, I, all of this is there today, I believe that, uh, yeah, actually all of this on this slide is there today. So, you know, shift scheduling is critical for your first line workers. It's one of the things that defines them, just like I said about check in, uh, clock in and clock out. Um, they're heavily dependent upon knowing their schedules and being able to, you know, update, you know, when they're working based on changes. So whether managers are making those changes or something, you know, they need to request time off, uh, but to basically be able to adjust those schedules, it's something that those first line workers are very dependent upon. So another capability is, you know, they need the ability to easily review their schedules from mobile devices. So we're going to take a look at the shifts um, app on the mobile device today. We're going to spend some time doing that. And you know, so for them to be able to submit time off requests, clock in, clock out, um, you know, just um, you know, view any open shifts if they have the ability to and they want to take an, an extra shift. Uh, to be able to go in and see right from their mobile device what is available uh, as an open shift and be able to take that on. So, from a managerial perspective, the functionality that's there 
for managers inside of shifts uh, for managing first line workers. They have the capability to copy and paste shifts. They can, um, so those are the individual shifts. They can copy and paste whole schedules. So if they have a date range um, that they're setting out a schedule for, like I, I know um, my wife actually is involved in this and she, her schedules are set for two weeks in advance. So as a manager, she had, she would have the capability to use in shifts to go and, and copy two weeks of scheduling and for all of the employees and carry that and copy that for the following two weeks so that um, she'd have a starting place for setting the schedules going forward. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's very important to managers uh, because it makes them much more efficient. Uh, it gives you the capability to easily plan shifts so you have a graphical user interface, um, a calendar essentially, so that you can see who's working when and the manager has the capability to see, you know, um, do they have enough coverage during specific hours um, or do they need to be able to bring additional staff on during those periods of times? They can import export schedules from and to Excel. Um, so, you know, a lot of companies, they actually spend most of their time setting their schedules inside of Excel, but sending that out through email is really not efficient. <laughs> uh, so managers, if it's easier for them, they can set the schedule inside of Excel and then they can actually import it into shifts or vice versa. If they're working inside of shifts to set the schedules and then they want to export it because they do need to send it through somebody for email, um, they have that capability there also. Um, so managers can approve and decline time off requests. Um, so your first line workers, they can submit a time off request, specify the type of time off. Is it, you know, holiday time? Is it vacation time? Is it sick time? Um, and those types can be defined inside of shifts. Um, so managers can basically do that approval right inside of shifts and they can do it using the desktop application or they can do it using the mobile app. Um, managers, they can add and edit day notes also. So if you have a specific day that where, um, as an example, you have a VP coming into your store and you want all of your employees to be aware that there is going to be, you know, a regional VP in the store that day, you can create a day note that all of those employees will actually see. They can't edit it, but they can see it. Um, another great example is using like a sales goal for a day. You can set that as a day note so that at the top of your calendar, uh, when employees are looking at their schedules, they can see what the actual sales goal is for that specific day. So whatever type of information you can communicate, you want to communicate, it's just a note that you can share. And um, lastly is schedules can be saved as a PDF. So companies still today are heavily using printouts that are just taped to a wall in like a lunchroom or cafeteria uh, that sets the schedule and that's how people are used to getting their schedules so you can actually export the schedule for a given time period to pdf then print it out and still continue to post it on the wall uh, as an interim until everybody comes on board with using the apps that are there the mobile app Okay, so, so time clock um, and time clock is exactly what it says. You know, people, when I was younger, one of my first jobs, I had to go in and there was a punch card, had to put it into the time clock, clock in, do my shift, and when I was done, clock back out. Um, that capability is now available on the, as part of the shifts app inside of Teams on your mobile devices. And you can basically start the clock and run it uh, the whole time that you're working. And then at the end of the shift, you go back to your mobile device and just say end shift um, and stop the clock. Uh, it gives you the capability to track breaks. Um, so you can start a break and 
you know, run it for the course of the break and then stop it. Um, so I'll show you, I'm going to show you all of these capabilities. All right, so um, yeah, let's just uh, at this point jump over to uh, do the demo of shifts. So let me just See if I can get this and pull this on the screen. Okay, so this is shifts and um, this is the desktop application at this point. Uh, after we go through this, we'll jump over and I'll show you the capabilities that are inside of the mobile application. Um, but you can see here that as a manager, you have access to the schedule. You have access to the requests and any any settings for the four shifts across the top here you have here's your here's today as well as here's the time period that you're working on and if you want to change the time period you can just go down and use the calendar function to change the uh, week that you're actually looking at down the left hand side here you can see that i've added members into specific groups so that I can track and look at you know how many hours do they have during this period of time so I can see who the member is and their actual hours that they are assigned to work within that period um, just to make sure you know it gives managers an easy way to make sure that everybody's fully utilized across the top here if I have any open shifts it tells me how many shifts I have so you can see it's okay I've got one open shift here which is over here and if I were to click on this I can get a drop down menu that basically allows me to say assign that shift and it then props me pops up with just the members that are within the group that I am looking at so I am inside of the managers group at this point so these three individuals are managers and those are the only ones that I can assign this shift to as part of that. So I'm just gonna click Christy here and say save and um, that shift is assigned down here to Christy. Sorry, it's this one. Um, so I mentioned the groups. Uh, these you can collapse and expand these groups to be able to easily see the different times. So if I want to just submit, you know, collapse each of these groups that I created, um, you can see I've got the managers group, store associates, customer service, and an other group essentially. So if I want to just take a look here at the, I can. I can close the other group and I can look at just the customer service. So I've only got one person in customer service and um, the, I have one open shift. So again, I can just take this open shift and assign this to Miriam and save that for Miriam. So that shift's assigned to her now. So you can see with these different employees, you can see how many hours they have across the period of a week. So if they have availability, um, they can either take on new shifts or we can assign them new shifts, but you can you get a very graphical look and to be able to see what, um, where you may need to assign additional staff to make sure that the manager has coverage for the company at that point in time. If we take a look over here, uh, you have, these are your members. So if I wanna add a new member to my group, uh, I can, you know, say, um, let's say Lee. So all I have to do is type a couple characters of the name and it'll pull up that person. And if I say add Lee in, you can see he's automatically added. And closed and now you can see I've got Lee over here on my left hand navigation bar 
and Lee doesn't have any shifts, but I can assign, I can as easily assign a shift for him here. Um, and either, you know, if I had an open shift, I could assign that, or I can just say, okay, we're gonna just have him work 12 to eight. And in this, you can specify custom column levels for a shift. So instead of working, uh, instead of saying, you know, 8 a.m. to 12 a.m., or sorry, instead of saying 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., we can say morning shift here, and it will use that label to specify the shift as opposed to the actual hours. And um, you can add you can add notes to the shifts here. But one of the key things is activities. So if if you're giving this shift to Lee because you need additional work done. You can go in here and you can say, you know, what what is the activity? Um, you know, unpacking merchandise. And save that in. You can say, okay, so he's going to work on that. You can specify, you know, like how long he's going to work on that. And you can just keep adding this. So essentially it becomes a task list that Lee needs to complete during that period of time. Or during that shift, really. So now you can see that's there. So you can just keep adding tasks for what you want Lee to focus on for that. And then Lee's able to see that on his mobile device. So we'll try and pull this back up when we get into um, the mobile application. So there's the shift that's assigned to Lee at this point. Um, you can also with this um, reorder your groups. So if you want to say, OK, um, you know, just have managers first and then customer service and click save. You can do that and um, you can see it made managers. Well, I think managers was first, but cust customer service is second and Stewart Associates is uh, third and uh, then I just have my other group in there so you can you can do that within there and um, so you, you have those capabilities there. Um, I had mentioned the copy schedule so right from the top of the navigation here you can a manager can click copy schedule and come down and specify the start date that they're going to copy it for the period that they want to copy and the end date they can specify what to include as part of that being copied. So for example, if they don't want time off in there, they can they can just knock that off. Um, and uh, you know, they could just they could basically take off activities and open shifts and and handle it, handle that so that essentially in this case only the shifts would be copied. Um, and then you can at that then you would basically spec specify okay so what are the dates that you want to copy it to so i'm just going to um, push it out a little bit we're going to say if i can get the right month i'm going to say start in july 1st and we do a copy, it'll run through and it'll copy that initial time period out to that same group of days for uh, in July. So if I go back to my calendar here and my date picker and move down to July, now we should see Okay, maybe I did something wrong with copying it. Um, I tested it earlier, it does work. <laughs> oh, well, maybe I copied it for the wrong dates. So here's June 1st, and uh, you can see the, the, the schedules and all the shifts that are in there that are assigned for them. All right, so let's go back to
Go back to May. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Okay, going back to the work week here. All right, so this is the schedule that we were working on here. Here's today's date and the shifts that are available, uh, as well as the groups and all that we've been working with. So I'm going to just kind of collapse a couple of these. And um, so once a manager goes through and puts all their schedules together, um, actually, let me show you something else here. So here's these day notes that I mentioned. So from the top here, you can go right into the top of any of these and add um, sales goal or whatever note that you want to add of for, for your employees to see, and they will see that at the top. So here's one that I had done earlier that the VP is in the store. Here's the sales goals for these other days, and you can see it varies based on um, the day of the week when they think they're going to be busier, but they, it's, it's, a, it's a note. It's completely customizable for whatever you need it to be. Okay, so as a manager, I've been setting the schedule for everyone, but I haven't shared it yet because it's not complete. But now I'm complete and I'm ready to share it. So up at the top here, you'll see the, this asterisk here. That means there's changes to the schedule that have not been shared. So as soon as you're ready uh, and you're ready for that, you basically just click the share here and specify the dates that you want to share so you can actually make changes into the future and not share those yet you can work on your schedules way out in advance but this is the schedule for this week i made an update to it i want to change that and you can also see here these asterisks these are days that had changes so that's there that's where they're going to be shared there um, you can also with in terms of the actual sharing you can say, are you sharing it to the entire team or is there somebody specifically that was affected and you're just going to update them so you have that capability within there. OK, so that is uh, the. Functionality that is available within the. Teams client, the shift app inside of the Teams client uh, for managers primarily. And you, you can see the, the views are a little different, but basically individual users, when they come in to it, even if they are using the Teams client, they're going to see what they have access to see. All right, so um, I kind of showed that there's some different views up here across the top. Um, there's also additional levels to be able to configure views. So if you want to just see your shifts here, um, if you want to see it by people, if you want to see it by shift, uh, you can change the way this interface looks so that it's customizable for what you want to see. So, you know, if you want to be able to see things by the groups or just the open shifts uh, or availability, you have that capability to switch the views uh, through through that. All right, so that is the. Shifts demo. Um, so let's what I want to show you now is the mobile application. So hopefully. I was having a little bit of problems with the. Mirroring app earlier. So uh, I think I'm going to need to restart this. Give me it's just a second here.
I don't know what it is about this. I, I had a speaker on a session that I was producing earlier today, and they were having the same exact issue with the, the mobile app and the, the mirroring app. It basically goes to sleep and then you have to restart it in order to get to be able to show it. So, all right, so let me drag this on so that you guys can see this. We'll come back to that later. Okay, so we'll just do do it this way. All right, so this is the Teams application, the Teams mobile application on my cell phone and um, running the Shifts app. So you can see that you have your typical controls for Teams across the bottom for chats and Teams and um, your calendar functionality. Uh, and any activity that you have going on in the system, you can swap between those, but you're gonna notice this over here on the, how about if I do it on my phone? <laughs> All right, so in here, by selecting the ellipsis on the lower right-hand side of the Teams bar, menu bar, you get a pop-up menu of available applications um, here. So what I've done is I've actually selected shifts at this point. And when I select shifts, this screen loads here, which is the main shift screen. And you can see there's an, uh, a group for a menu item for requests, for open shifts, and for the time clock. Uh, but it also at the bottom, it shows me the shifts that I am scheduled to work. So I'm actually logged in as Megan here and I am working a 4 p.m. Megan's working a 4 p.m. May 28th to 12 a.m. May 29th. So it's an eight hour shift this evening that she's working. And then tomorrow she's got another eight hour shift. Sorry, on Saturday she has another eight hour shift for 12 to 8 p.m. Uh, so, you know, if she opens that, she can view the, the time and all associated with it, as well as the, the day notes that I had mentioned for what the sale goal is, any other notes that the manager would have assigned, and she can see it's assigned to her. Um, she can also swap this out so if she is unable to work this for some reason and she wants to pick up a trade with another worker um, so that they swap shifts that she can basically do that right from here and select their her shift and the other team member shift and basically just swap them at that point and what will happen here is well actually so there should yeah it, it It'll, it creates a request that then is forwarded for to the manager for approval um, and the manager can approve it. Now I've got Megan set up as a manager in here, so we'll go back and I'll show you the request and should be able to approve it from there. Um, but also within that same area, sorry, um, she has the capability to offer this. So if she doesn't know who she's going to swap it with, she can select the offer button and put it up to see if there's another member that would like to take that shift. And then they have the capability to say yes or no, and um, then essentially swap the shift from there. So also within here, because Megan has the rights to, um, as a manager, you can edit the shift right in here. Uh, most of your employees, your first line workers, aren't going to have the capability to edit that. Um, but 
for a manager using this application, they actually get that. And then they can, again, share it from the top right here. Um, any changes that are made, they can then share them directly out. Um, so that's that part of it. Now, um, I want to just show you the requests here. So the swap that I submitted, that Megan submitted, uh, that's here showing up and as in progress because it's awaiting approval. Um, so because Megan's a manager, she can go in and actually see it. And oh, come on. Should be able to approve it right from there. Okay, maybe Megan's not a manager. Okay, so that's Megan's request that was submitted for approval and a manager will get notified of that request and then on their device, they can basically go in and just uh, approve that change. So also here, there's an open shift. So Megan can see that there's an open shift. Megan has the capability to work from 12 to 8 p.m. on the 29th. So right from her phone, she can, or her mobile device, she can request that shift. And um, the open shift must have at least one open slot available. Your requests are assigned. So I guess I'm not, Megan doesn't have an availability there to be able to pick that shift up. So the other functionality is the time clock that I mentioned. So when a first line worker comes in and they're scheduled to work, they can basically start the clock right from here for a shift that they're working. And all they have to do is basically hold down the button and it'll start the clock. So now you can see on the left hand side, she has started her shift and it's tracking how long she's working. So Megan would let this run for the whole period of time that she's working until it's break time. So at that point, then she can switch over and just again, just hold down the break and it'll start the break and count of that break time. And for however long she's on break, uh, it'll track that amount of time that she's on break. So at the end of break, she basically just holds it down again and it will end the break. And it tracks how long she was on break. And now you can see that we've been working for 50 seconds, but I'm going to stop the shift at this point. And now you can see over here that um, you know, when it was actually worked. So you can see these bottom two, I already confirmed. This top one here is the shift that we were actually just working on. So these are in, uh, apparently these are in Pacific time zone. So, um, you know, 2.42 to 2.43, and I took a break as part of that. And from here, uh, you can just basically confirm it. Uh, or actually, if there is a need to change it, um, as, a, as a manager, you can just, you can actually go in and change that. You can add a break period into it. Uh, you can delete it. Um, so in this case, we're going to confirm it and just say, you know, confirm timesheet for that period. Megan's going to say confirm. And now that time is confirmed for the shift that she worked. So you have those capabilities in there. So that's primarily the uh, clock in and clock out capabilities. And let's see, what else did I miss in here? So that's the schedule and everybody that's working for that day. And if I go back, I can also, um, you know, start a, you know, a swap or offer a shift. I can specify a time off. Um, I can set availability. So if I'm going to just say time off, uh, I can request this right from here. So what is the uh, 
type of time off. Um, I'm going to take a vacation day and I can specify, Megan can specify, you know, the date. So we're going to say tomorrow and say done. And, um, you know, if there's any notes or anything that um, she needs to put in for her vacation, she can enter them in there and then just say that she's done and then that gets submitted. OK, so here's the approval. So because Megan's a manager, um, she can actually approve and decline this request also. Um, so and, and I just set this up to be able to demonstrate this functionality for you. Um, obviously, you know, you'd have a manager that was assigned to her and, you know, it would go to her direct manager for approval. So if I just say approve, it goes through and it's automatically approved and it tracks who who it was approved by tracks the time of the manager's response as part of that request so that is pretty much the capabilities um, there is a search you know you can search and all within here and they have access to all of their other functionalities within teams so you know we're part of the store portal i can access my documents and all within here and this is just Teams app functionality, but in case you haven't seen it, so I can pull up, I can access my documents, I can open them from here, I can send a copy to somebody. Um, you know, you can have your conversations right from in here. So if you just uh, wanted to just say hello to Lee, you can basically do that. Um, you can also start a call right from here uh, in the top top right section here. You can start your video call or an audio call. Uh, so you have all your native team capabilities within this um, as well as meetings that are on your schedule to sit, that you need to take part in. You, you have all of that functionality there. So that is basically an overview of the Teams mobile app and specifically the Shifts app. So hopefully you found that helpful. Um, let me jump back to couple have a couple other slides to share with you and I put a bunch of the screenshots in the deck I'm not going to go through them but um, they're in there so when I share the deck out for everybody uh, you'll have access to them Okay, so hopefully everybody's seeing that. Okay, so messaging actions for mobile is another future capability. This was just announced at Build 2020 last week. Um, it's essentially the capability to have an action for, as an example, a task inside of a message and for them to be able to take action upon that. Um, so, you know, just uh, any type of th these actions they can basically be triggered from inside of a message and they can be used to enable scenarios such as you know creating tasks or other type of work items following a discussion within a chat or a channel um, personal apps that's another thing that was um, announced at build 2020 last week now this functionality actually is already available in your uh, full teams client or, or the web client uh, but now they're going to make these personal apps, um, which are essentially Teams applications focusing on interactions with a single user, such as, you know, just a one one on one conversational bots or personal tabs, you know, the types of apps that are already available, as I said, for the desktop and the web. Um, so that's, uh, you know, some other functionality there. Other things that are planned. Um, as far as I could tell for this year is a capability to delete and remove a shift schedule for a team. So when I, I didn't show you this, but when I first went into shifts, I had to set up a schedule and choose a specific team that it was associated with. So um, you set that up, you use it for a while and determine that for some reason you don't need it there. Believe it or not, there's no way to delete that right now. 
Um, so that's one of the functionalities is to remove the capability to leader remove that schedule from a team um, that's coming this year. Reoccurring shifts. In the nature that you're used to setting a reoccurring meeting inside of Outlook, that functionality doesn't exist right now. However, there are workarounds for it. There's other ways to basically copy a shift and um, do those type of things. There's just three or four workarounds that you essentially have that same capability. Um, but true reoccurring shifts is scheduled for this year. And my understanding is I think that's supposed to happen this first, the first half of this year. So we're getting down towards the end with that also. Um, other things that are coming is Outlook calendar integration. So if you set a shift to be able to have that sync to somebody's Outlook calendar um, so that they have access through it, whether it's through Outlook or through Teams and shifts. Um, and then right now too, um, if you noticed, I accessed shifts in the client off of the left rail, left navigation rail. Um, Right now, there's no capability to basically set shifts as a tab inside of an existing team. So that's other functionality that's planned to happen this year. And then also um, right now, everyone had, in order to manage shifts, they have to be an owner of the team. So there's functionality that's coming to basically allow a non-owner to manage shifts um, so that they don't have to also be an owner of the team. You can basically specify somebody that just can manage those shifts. So that's future functionality. Um, just wanted to touch on driving user adoption. Uh, you know, user adoption for this stuff is critical. And, you know, the thing that we found is to really focus on the mobile capabilities. These First line workers, they tend to be very mobile um, in their nature of their work. So whether it's a sales associate in a retail store or a, um, you know, a nurse or a doctor in a hospital, um, they're very mobile, you know, sometimes moving between locations and all, all within a single shift. So, you know, focusing on the capabilities that are going to get from a mobile device is something that has, you know, really helped with adoption of the functionality. The other thing is spoon feeding them tips around how to use it on a daily basis. Um, you know, I guess they're just like everybody, you know, we all forget things and to have that reinforcement there on a regular basis is important. Uh, but what we found specifically is to create short videos. I mean, things like Okay, add a shift, you know, 30 seconds, done. And, you know, but to do those repetitively, so each day they're getting a different tip, you know, how to swap a shift, how to offer a shift, each as individual training bits and share them throughout the period of time. And then after you have your knowledge base of those created, to recirculate, recirculate them and uh, post them, repost them because you have one, both new employees coming in, but people also forget. So to have that to reinforce the knowledge that, that they had already attained. Um, the, you know, just, I, I already mentioned the video-based training resources, but um, another thing is remote, remote access to a knowledge base, someplace that they can go and search for answers to their questions. And uh, then lastly, if they don't find an answer there, um, someplace that they can go to ask for help. And, you know, we specifically have set up um, these support forums where the champions for teams within the company are there to respond to questions that are submitted by your first line workers. And being able to respond quickly to them for their questions is critical as part of your adoption. So just some tips for helping to drive adoption of the first line worker capabilities. All right, so I think we're wrapping up now. Uh, actually, I've only got a couple minutes left. So I've got resources in here. Uh, I'll leave that for you. I'll share that. 
Um, what I want to do is just let me see if I can pull up any Q&A, any questions that anybody submitted. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I don't see any questions here, so um, I will hang out a little bit. And if you have any questions about this functionality, feel free to, you know, drop me a question or certainly. Um, you know, these are my social media links. You know, you can hit me up on LinkedIn. That's probably the quickest response for me. I don't spend much time in email anymore. That's one of the great benefits of Teams. Um, but, you know, Twitter's kind of the second. And then I'd also ask, please, you know, I'm going to be posting videos. I have a series of videos already available out on my YouTube channel. So please take a minute to visit the channel and subscribe. Uh, you will find a copy of this out, this session out there also at some point. And so I think that is the majority. Well, that's the presentation. So I guess just a couple other key things to just remember. Please take a minute to support um, to submit feedback. Um, I thrive off of the feedback. That's what I need to basically improve how I am as a speaker so i have very thick skin please don't hesitate to let me know what you thought um you know if it's great let me know if i've got things that i can do to be a better speaker presenter and a better resource for you please let me know because i want to be that person for you I know you've seen a lot of these other slides here but take a minute to fill out the bitly uh for the uh, raffle for the Oculus Forms uh, devices. And then lastly, if you got some spare funds that you can share, um, you know, we've got a lot of heroes that have been working through this COVID-19 crisis worldwide. And uh, a lot of these organizations can show sure user support. So please uh, take a couple minutes and uh, help support them. Well, folks, thank you so much for joining. I am going to this is basically my session's end. I believe that we have John White coming up next uh, for getting started in two minutes, and his is on sharing Power BI reports. Thank you.